What's up everyone, so I'm back again. Uh, today we're gonna be going over to John's place again and I'm gonna try to work on the wiring a little bit. But before that, I'm gonna give you guys a little update on the engine because I haven't really showed that too much yet and I've done some stuff to it, so here we go. So as you can see, the engine is pretty much together. The only thing left I really have to do is a flywheel, or not the flywheel, the crank pulley or harmonic balancer, whatever you wanna call it. And then the oil pan, I'm just waiting on the O-ring for the pickup tube and then it should go on. But otherwise, the way I got the rocker arms on, cause I didn't really talk about that earlier, was I used these little washers in here and um, I was able to space them up high enough. So I had play in them and then I can actually adjust them down to where there's uh, zero play. Um, like I said earlier, since these are hydraulic lifters, there's oil that runs through that keeps a constant pressure. You don't want any kind of a lash, I think it's called, in here. Yeah, I basically just zeroed it down to where there's no play in it, um, to where it touches or where I felt little, like uh, a little bit of resistance on the adjuster. And yeah, I have that all set up now. So um, another thing is the valve covers are done. John welded some bungs onto them so I can run AIM lines to my breather tank. But uh, other than that, the engine is pretty much ready. So just gotta go work on the car now. So we stopped really quick at Home Depot so John could get a new grinder and he's got burgers stashed <laughs> in his car for whenever he gets hungry. Look at this. It's spinach too, they're healthy. Ooh, they're even healthy burgers. <laughs> he is ready. Wow. All right, so we're back at John's place. Um, see my cars over there. Basically, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna give you guys like a quick lesson on some like electrical stuff. So when I do start wiring everything, it's not like a mystery for what I'm doing. And if any of you guys haven't done any of this before, it's gonna be really confusing. So I'm just gonna go over some like really basic stuff and kind of lead into how it actually works in like a race car setup to show how like simple some of this stuff is. Cause it's, it's honestly not that hard once you understand certain things about it. All right, so to start off, you have your battery right here. And basically as simple as it can be, a circuit is two wires and some kind of load. So we're gonna make that load a light bulb. And that's just as simple as it can be. Um, to show this, Basically, I'll just go ahead and tap my power and ground for my light onto my battery so you guys can see that even this works. And that's basically how everything is set up in a car with a couple things added, which I'll get to later. All right, so you have your power and your ground. I'm just gonna go ahead and touch it to the battery terminals and the light comes on. So it's that easy. Now, in a car, you don't wanna run it straight to the battery. You're gonna wanna have a couple things in between um, before it actually gets to the power. Things like protection or a fuse or a switch to be able to turn it on and off. All right, so this is our simple circuit. And now we're gonna talk about how it actually works in the car. So <clears throat> basically what you're gonna have is a fuse and some kind of switch. And then it will go to your load, the light bulb. And then, as many of you know, the ground is the chassis of the car. What a lot of people don't understand, for some reason, is that the body of the car is basically this negative wire. So manufacturers, in order to cut prices, they figured out that they can just put the negative cable straight to the body of the car as the ground, and then you can put this straight to the body of the car, the chassis, and they'll conduct current so instead of having twice as much wire, they can cut that in half. So that's why your grounds on your car goes to the chassis or the engine block, because the engine block's grounded too from the battery. So to put this into context, I have my fuse block and my switch panel over here. So in order to wire up this light, basically what would happen is I would take a wire from the positive side of the battery, uh, route it to here because this is like a power block. I'll, I can get into how power blocks and like parallel circuits work later, but basically it's gonna give all these power and then the output will be on the top when the switch is toggled. So let's say this is the headlight. I would turn it on, the power would go from the battery through here, it's connected and up out 
and then after that to the fuse box. Um, from the way this is set up, I'm gonna have to run the fuse box after the switch. I would like to run it before because switches also can take damage. Um, if for some reason, more amps move through it than necessary. But uh, so from there, the fuses would go, or the fuse that it's attached to would go to the light. And then the ground would just go to the chassis of the car. And then you have your complete circuit and then the light will work off this switch. So now that you know how a basic light or headlight or even brake lights work, because it's the same thing, except that instead of like a toggle switch, it uses a switch on your brake pedal. Um, it's basically going to be the same for everything else in the car, like your, uh, like your fuel, fans, and then you have like your headlights and uh, anything else that you want to run to your switch. And then there's going to be another section that I'm going to run that goes off of a relay, which basically is going to uh, turn on automatically when I would hit the ignition. And I'll kind of describe how that works right now. The way a relay works is you have, it's this little box looking thing. I'll grab one in a second so you guys can see. And then you have a switch inside, a magnet, and then your output, and then your input. So uh, this is just a very simple way to put it, but essentially what's going to happen is here's your load, which is this magnet, and you're gonna run power and then ground out of here because this is your load and then um you're gonna run a switch right here so when you turn this on and the magnet is magnetized from the electricity running through it it's gonna pull this switch down and then complete the circuit from this side to this side so like on an ignition relay um this is gonna be a pretty big power source so you're not gonna really want to run it through a switch because usually it's gonna be too much for it or uh, you want it to just turn on automatically. So either either way, whatever you want to do, you can run it either way. Um, but uh, so basically when I hit the ignition switch, now this is the ignition relay, this would go to like my power block, my other power block right here. And it would have like my ECU power on it. It would have like my cluster lights and everything that I just want to turn on with the ignition. And um, yeah, basically it's pretty straightforward from there. And then you can use other relays for things. Like if you wanted to have your fans automatically on, you can use it for the fans or the fuel pump. It just really depends how you want to set it up. It's all preference. Uh, here's one I pulled out of my car. This is for my fuel. Um, but as you can see, there's two big prongs and two small prongs. Uh, so my guess, I mean, I could test this with a multimeter and see what has connection and what doesn't. The one that won't have um, continuity through it will be the one for the switch, which is probably these bigger ones that carry the bigger current. And then the smaller ones, which will have continuity through, will have the load or the magnet that actually turns the relay on and off. But this is pretty much just what it looks like inside a car. Each panel on the fuse block, or I guess this is like the primary fuse block. I have another one that's built into the engine harness. Um, I don't really need to worry about because it it's already wired for me. But um, I want these to be exposed so I can see if they're broken on the inside or, and it's just gonna be easy access if I ever need to replace one. But I'm gonna have the panel on like this and the switch panel is basically, sorry, hold on. I want it to sit in here just like this so everything's visible and it looks nice and clean. All right, so those are the basics for everything that you're gonna wanna be wiring up to like a switch panel and your fuse box and stuff. Um, I'm gonna get to some other things later on like your starter and wiring your alternator and everything once I get to it. Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, so I don't have a starter here to show you guys an example. So I'm just gonna wait till I get to it. All right, so before I try wiring everything up and getting the switch panel and dash mounted in, they have to finish a little more on the cage and get the crossbar in. So I'm just gonna basically go over to the car and work on pulling out all the extra wiring that I'm not going to need. Um, I'm going to save a lot of it just so I can reuse some of it because like wire is expensive and a lot of this is perfectly fine. I can just cut it up and reuse it. But uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull out all the stuff that's not needed and then save what I'll need for like the taillights and everything like that. And I can just run to my switches. You know, I cut out everything. So what's left is um, all the stuff that's under the dash for like AC stuff, uh, radio, everything like that. And then... Um, I think my ignition relay is in here somewhere. I gotta find that. Uh, also, I'm gonna have to figure out uh, the power steering motor because it runs through CAN bus where it 
modulates it being on and off depending on how fast you're going. But I'm just gonna try to keep it all the way on and I gotta figure out which one's the power in the ground so I can run it to a switch and actually have it on when the car's off. So if I wanna roll it around or anything, just flick it on and then use power steering, make it really easy to push or whatever I need to do. Other than that, uh, I got like my brake lights and everything like that, or the wiring for them all marked up so I know what's what, and I can just run that straight through there and then send it to the switch. And then after that, I'll do my own wiring to send it to the battery or my, not the battery, but uh, the power block. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start getting rid of all this other stuff that I don't need. One thing I am gonna have to figure out though is uh, I'm not worried about power locks or anything like that, but I am worried about being able to open and close my window. So I'm gonna have to get into the motor somewhere in here and uh, figure out how I can run just like simple switches just for each side. Try to get rid of all this extra stuff, but uh, that shouldn't be too difficult either, hopefully. But that'll be something I worried about or I'll worry about later on. It's not the first thing I care about, honestly. All right, so we're gonna cut to the time lapse. taillight stuff over here that I'm probably gonna reuse then there's like all the AC stuff and stuff under the dash for like the radio um so going after the power steering a little bit when I cut it open I saw that they have like these pretty thick gauge wires in here and then they have like these little ones over here so what I'm thinking is that this runs like a starter motor and there's a solenoid that turns it on and off uh, so I'm guessing I could run power to ground with this and then have it on or have like the control switch basically be two of these wires. I'm guessing it's the red and black one, but uh, I'm gonna have to play with it a little bit and I think I can get it to work. I'm not too worried about anything yet. All right, so now there's nothing left in the engine bay uh, except for like my cutoff switch stuff which i'm gonna have to switch because i want a four-way position one so i can cut off the alternator too because that's what the drift league wants so the car completely dies like immediately um then you got like your engine grounds down here that i'm probably gonna reuse but other than that everything is gone so i'm probably gonna start cleaning all this out right now and maybe cutting some stuff out like these tabs I'm not sure what I want to do yet. It's kind of hard to tell what I need to get rid of without the engine, but I'm also going to paint it. So I'll probably just start cleaning it to prep for that. Oh yeah, another thing that got done is uh, John TIG welded up some uh, Dash 10 bungs on here or on my valve cover so I can uh, run my breather tank and kind of show you guys how it's going to be set up. I mean, as best as I can without the engine, but just so you can get an idea. So, sorry, it's gonna be really loud. John's like wiring up subs right now. So, but basically, this is the valve cover for this side of the engine. So just pretend the engine is there. Uh, this fitting is gonna basically take the hose under the intake, and then there's going to be my breather tank that's gonna sit right here, and it's just gonna be routed just like that. This one on this side, just straight shot right there. So it's pretty straightforward. But yeah, they look super nice. So I'm excited to get that all set up. All right, so let's get to cleaning.
I got it decently clean. Obviously, it still needs some work. Um, I just pretty much went over it with like the brake cleaner to get all like the big stuff off. But uh, I might do some sanding on some of it, obviously before paint, just to get it all like nice and ready. And then um, I'm gonna go over it with like some wipes and paper towel to like touch up the last of the dirt to get it all out of here. So, and then do another thing of degreaser and then some primer and then some paint. Uh, I'll keep the color surprise and then I'll try to like go back and show you guys how I did it. So you guys can do something similar too if you want. All right. so that's gonna be it for today um if you have any questions on like any of the wiring stuff just go ahead and like message me on instagram or leave a comment because it does get a little bit confusing um i will go in more detail obviously when i start wiring everything and it's gonna make a little bit more sense of how it actually works in the car based off of like a simple diagram but yeah if you have questions just like let me know uh so but uh or if i for some reason i did something wrong let me know too i i hopefully am doing it right uh, everything seems to be working so far, so that's good, but yeah, um, thank you guys for watching, uh, make sure to leave a like on the video, and I'll see you next time.